Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is day 302, Friday, January the 5th, 2018. Thank you so much for tuning in. And welcome to all my new subscribers and to those of you who may be viewing this video for the first time. Uh, thanks for joining us. Okay, uh, yesterday I told you that I was going to comment on the most recent New York Times op-ed. I will be doing that in just a moment. First, I want to cover just a real quickly the uh, headline news of the day because there's some very important things going on here. Are you tired of winning yet? I'm not. Well, we had some big wins today. Let's go through them. Chief FOIA officer confirms all of Comey's memoirs were classified at the time they were written. Well, we all saw James Comey testify in front of Congress and tell the story about how he leaked that memo over to his buddy at the university and asked him to give it to the New York Times in hopes that they could get a special prosecutor. That was a classified memo. It also turns out that all of his memos, according to the FOIA officer, are classified. That means James Comey needs a good lawyer because he's going to jail. He also might need a good PR spokesman. Maybe he can call Brad Bauman if Mr. Bauman is done uh, handling PR for the Seth Rich family. We'll have to check back on that. But basically, yes, we have James Comey. Uh, uh, he uh, is basically admitted, sat right there in Congress, and told the story about how he leaked that classified memo to his friend. That's a crime. The dirty cop, the dishonorable James Comey, better lawyer up. Federal judge rules the House panel can subpoena Fusion GPS's bank records showing payments to Democrats, journalists, media organizations, and all the rest. Nunez wins. Do you think Devin Nunez is tired of winning? I don't. Now, this has been going on for about two months. So about two months ago, they were having this battle. Nunez wanted to subpoena because he had learned that there was at least three journalists, two of whom he thinks he knows the names of, who were paid by Fusion GPS to run their propaganda stories about the dossier and Russia collusion. And when he went to court to try to get those bank records, uh, Fusion GPS's attorneys fought back. And then, of course, right in the middle of that, that judge had to dismiss herself because it turned out she had conflicts of interest. So they appointed Judge Leon in, his, in her place. So now Judge Leon, of course, about three weeks ago, we covered this on Towergate then, he heard the arguments from the lawyers working for the House Intel Committee for Devin Nunes. And he said, hey, that sounds like a pretty good argument. He told Fusion GPS, unless you can counter that, uh, then uh, it uh, looks like that uh, I'm going to rule in favor of, the, uh, of Mr. Nunes. So they made their case. Uh, Judge Leon has analyzed that situation, and he came back today with the ruling. And the ruling is that uh, he agrees with Devin Nunes and his attorneys that Fusion GPS must now turn over all their bank records. So we're going to find out who all the journalists were, who the media organizations were, and uh, any other Democrats that may have been involved in this. Believe me, this is going to be... Uh, uh, bring about some serious criminal liability. It's going to destroy the reputation and careers of some journalists and some media organizations and cause a hell of a big stink. You think it stinks in the swamp now? Ho, ho, ho. Wait till, wait till Nunez gets his hands on those banking records. Tired of winning? I didn't think so. Paul Ryan has held his ground and he is backing up Devin Nunez. He says the DOJ and the FBI will comply. A lot of you are scratching your head and wondering, hey, did Paul Ryan suddenly become a white hat? Am I a Paul Ryan lover? No. As most of you know, he is the number one uh, Republican I am targeting for to be uh, uh, knocked out in 2018. I want Paul Ryan defeated. But at the moment, we have to give credit where credit is due. So why did Ryan hold his ground and back up Nunes? Well, I think there's uh, probably quite a few things going on here. Number one, because remember Paul Ryan gets memos and briefings on all of this information, all these closed session hearings, all this evidence that's, uh, that's, that's uh, been brought forth, and a lot of it we haven't even seen. Ryan has seen it. He can read the tea leaves. 
He knows which way the, the momentum is going. He knows the dossier is dead. He knows the Russian narrative is dead. He knows the Papagalopoulos thing will never fly. He understands exactly what is going on, and he knows about the deep state coup. He's got all the evidence right in front of him, and there's more to come. He also understands the legal obligation that Congress does have oversight of the DOJ and the FBI, including the NSD division of the Justice Department. They too must comply. We know this is legitimate because Nunes has already come out and made a statement stating he's very happy because Paul Ryan is backing him. So, big ears, Eddie Munster, Paul Ryan, manned up. And Nunes said that he was told that he can expect receiving those documents as soon as tonight. And they'll keep coming, and they will be coming in unredacted form. He's also going to get to interview all those witnesses including the top guy at counterintelligence inside the NSD and also Mr. Priestap, the man who's been behind the shadows who no one wanted to even murmur his name. He too will be facing the heat. Tired of winning? I didn't think so. Judicial Watch Tom Fitton has now identified 14 more classified emails, bringing the total to 18 classified emails now found on the uh, laptop of Anthony's Wiener. And those emails found their way onto the laptop of Anthony's Wiener because his wife, Huma, sent them there. And he's still got many more to go through. Well... Uh, James Comey, of course, is going to be needing representation and probably a good PR, PR man like Brad Bauman. It appears that maybe Huma is going to be needing a good lawyer and probably uh, maybe some help from Mr. Bauman as well. Uh, it appears that the Huma can probably expect an, a, uh, a um, midnight raid by the FBI with a search warrant anytime soon. Huma is going to jail, my friends, with her husband for different reasons. Of course, He's also involved in this, so they'll probably drag him out and charge him, and he'll be facing some additional jail time after he gets done serving the jail time he's currently serving. And Huma will be serving some time herself, because what she did is a violation. She transferred classified emails to a private computer and uh, knowingly did so. Full intent. She's going to jail. Tired of winning? I didn't think so. Let's continue. The Department of Justice has announced that they are reopening the Hillary email investigation, the rotten Reverend Clinton, and they knew this was coming. They knew this was coming. What was the big story yesterday? That little fire over at the Clinton place. And when the fire department got there, they found out there was no real house fire, no real room fire, nothing going on, just an excessive amount of smoke coming out of the damn chimney. Hmm, wonder what they were burning. Do you think they may have been burning documents? evidence. I think so. The rotten Reverend Clinton can probably also expect to knock on the door out or maybe have her door kicked in at three o'clock in the morning as the FBI comes in to serve, serve their search warrant and to extract all the evidence that's left that wasn't burned out of the home. You can expect that these things will be happening in the near future. The rotten Reverend Clinton is definitely going to jail. She definitely will be indicted. I can assure you of that. Uh, it's just a question of on what. There are so many things, so many crimes to choose from. Take your pick. So she will be lawyering up as well. Um, and of course, she also may want to retain the services of Mr. Bauman. She may be needing a little PR help. Don't you think? Tired of winning? No? I didn't think so. Then let's continue. Oh, by the way, the same time that they announced that the DOJ was reopening the Rotten Reverend Clinton email investigation simultaneously, uh, the FBI announced that they are op reopening the investigation into the Clinton Foundation and the pay for play. Now, we, we know that the Clintons had a heads up because they started burning documents and evidence yesterday, and today, as soon as the story broke, within a half an hour, every one of Hillary Rotten Reverend Clinton's minions were out there and on MSNBC and CNN and all the rest uh, going to bat for the Rotten Reverend. And they're frantic. They don't know what to do. 
because they know what's coming and they're all going down, many of them going down with her. And most of them know that she'll throw them under the bus and that she'll be the last to go. She will throw everyone to the wolves to save her neck. And a lot of people are very nervous because they know they can't trust her. She's a nasty woman and can't be trusted. Democrats have told Nancy Pelosi, Madam Botox, that if she doesn't win back the House in 2018 and take back the Senate, she's out. She's been told, put on notice, not only her, but the entire Democratic Party leadership in Congress. That would include Madam Botox, Steny Hoyer, and Mr. Clyburn, all three. Bam, gone. The Dems are saying either, either you have some success in 2018 and win it all, or you're gone. They were going to vote her out of her leadership position along with their number two and number three uh, in the Democratic Party. I'm telling you, you tired of winning yet? Nancy Pelosi isn't, isn't going to be doing very much winning this year, is she? I don't think so. I expect the Republicans will pick up five to six seats in the Senate and probably 11 to 16 seats in the House. That's my early prediction now. Could change. We got a while to go, you know, almost a year, but we'll see how that turns out. 11 months from now. Sessions, Jeff Sessions has finally woken up from his stupor. And we know that because he's now announcing he's going to undo the, or rescind the coal amendment. The coal amendment was put in place because there was a lot of federal laws that were gumming up the works for a lot of these states that were voting for medical marijuana or even recreational marijuana. Uh, and so there was a lot of conflicts. A lot of these states had had these referendums. The voters decided they want these things. But then, of course, uh, there was a lot of problems with the federal government and uh, the DEA and the FBI and all them who were basically possibly going to fight it or create a lot of problems. It was gumming up the works and stopping the states from being able to go ahead and move forward with putting together legislation that would bring these things into law. And so the Obama administration said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We are just going to basically hands off. If your state has voted for medicinal marijuana or for recreational marijuana, whatever, uh, decriminalized marijuana, whatever, we are, we are not going to you know, intervene. Whatever your citizens decide in the states, we will honor that. We, we are not going to impose. So he put together this coal amendment. And now Jeff Sessions walking up from his stupor right in the middle of a deep state coup with all these things happening around him. And what does Jeff, Jeff Sessions see as he wakes up from his stupor? He's going to crack down on the potheads. He's going to crack down on medicinal marijuana users and create a lot of problems for a lot of these states which is going to cost them millions of dollars and just create a lot of problems. So I don't know what in the world is thinking of Jeff Sessions, but can I give you a message, Jeff, if you're watching? You watching, Jeff? Read my lips, Jeff. You watching, Jeff, very, very closely? You ready? One, two, three. Go back to sleep, Jeff. On Sunday, the New York Times published an op-ed written by... Fusion GPS owners Glenn Homer Simpson, along with Peter, little Peter Frisch. They're the owners of Fusion GPS. And I could not believe they actually published this article. That's how bad it was. <clears throat> now, you have to pay a membership to belong to the Wall Street Journal to be able to read the full story. But fortunately, I was able to bit and piece together enough of it from uh, other places on the web that I was able to get a pretty good gist of what the story is all about. And uh, essentially what the story is trying to do was trying to say, well, you know, uh, the dossier only um, backed up what the uh, investigators at the DOJ and the FBI and the CIA had already learned. It was just kind of supported what they already knew and kind of helped move them in the right direction. But really, uh, it's uh, it's about the corruption. That's what it's about. This whole thing is about the corruption. That's what we need to focus. And hey, we learned from George Papadopoulos uh, all these things. And so basically, this is what that article tries to do. It tries to shift the narrative to the George Papagalopoulos. It tries to shift the narrative to saying, hey, what we need to be looking at is Trump's business relations with Russians. He has none. The only thing he's ever done in Russia was the Miss USA pageant in 2013. He has no hotels, no casinos, owns no property, has done no deals with Russians. Okay? Uh, but it doesn't stop them. Now, what actually happened here is that 
this was supposed to be part of a rollout of a series of articles, widespread. This was all pre-planned. It was a plot. And they dropped the first story on the Papagalopoulos thing last Friday night. And that was supposed to dominate the, the, uh, the, the school of thought for the next three days during the holiday weekend. They were hoping that it would still be cooking during this week. And then this story here was supposed to drop right behind it. And that was supposed to be followed up by appearances on TV, MSNBC, CNN, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Times. All the rest was supposed to pile on and really start pushing this new narrative to break away from the dossier and go back to this new narrative of, oh, it was Papagalopoulos and we need to be looking at it's all about the corruption and um, between Trump and Russians and business things, things like that. So basically it was, a, it was an attempt to change the narrative, but uh, what happened was that the Papagalopoulos story was debunked by me and many other people so quickly that by the time this story hit, the whole Papagalopoulos thing was already a joke. But they went ahead and published it anyway to give us a second joke, I guess. So I'm going to go through uh, here some of the major uh, uh, features of this disgusting uh, propaganda piece written by the co-founders of Fusion GPS. That would be Glenn Homer Simpson and little Peter Frisch. So let's get through it. First, Simpson and Frisch start by attesting to the sterling reputation of Christopher Steele, but conveniently fail to mention any of the claims Steele made in the dossier. So that's how they start the article. They tell you what a wonderful uh, guy Christopher Steele is, how he's, his reputation is so good, how he's a man of such sterling character, and why we should have all this credibility. So it's building up Steele. But then, at that point in the article, you're expecting the next two, three paragraphs to be something about his work on the dossier, but there's nothing there. They don't even bring it up. Don't even bring it up. Next, uh, since the dossier has been largely discredited and Papagalopoulos' story has been laughed out of town, they decide to shift the focus to Trump's business ties to Russia, never mentioning that 70 to 80 percent of Fusion GPS clients are Russians, Russian government agencies, oligarchs, and gangsters. This was brought out by Mr. Browder in the hearings, remember? Nor do they mention that the rotten Reverend Clinton hit the reset button, while the Clinton Foundation was pocketing $148 million and Slick Willie was pulling down five hundred k from a one-hour speech. They couldn't find a few lines of verbiage to remind us of Obama's promise to Mr. Medvedev to tell Vladimir that Obama will soon have more flexibility after the 2012 election because he doesn't have to run again. And all the while, transferring 20% of America's uranium rights to a Putin regime-controlled energy company at a time when the Obama Justice Department chose not to bring a racketeering case against the company's U.S. affiliate. Hey, Homer. Do you and little Peter, do you have any information about Trump financial ties to Russia? Because that's what you talk about in your article. Or Russians? If you do, then let's have it. Spill the beans. Show us what you got. Nobody's stopping you. Is there, Homer? Little Peter? No? Nothing? You're basically giving us absolutely nothing to hang our hat on, fellas. You tell us in your article it's all about this corruption, yet you don't lay out one single shred of evidence for it. You just title your article. What did they title this article? Yeah, the title of the article was The Republicans Fake Investigations. The Republican Fake Investigations was the title of that disastrously funny propaganda piece. Now, Homer and little Peter, let's get back to you. You, two rectal rim shots, wrote a long article, too long, telling us how the Republican, Republican committees are withholding damning information. We're not talking about classified information here. 
We're talking about Fusion GPS's own information. You knuckle draggers wrote that crap. Why not just tell us what it is? Why wait for the Republicans? Hearings. Why don't you crybabies just tell the story instead of complaining about the story that's not being told? You tell us that the Republicans are are have got all this evidence and they refuse to uh, bring it to the forefront, yet you apparently know the whole story and you aren't saying anything. Maybe because there is no story, Homer and little Peter. Keep watching because I'm sure you're both watching now. Could it be that you cannot disclose the details of this little story you have because it's total bullshit, little Peter and Homer? I think that may be it. Do you think little Peter and Homer are tired of winning? I don't think so because they just lost big today in court thanks to Judge Leon. And we're going to find out who you guys paid to run all this garbage. And you're done. Also, in that article, Homer Simpson and little Peter Frisch say that they were all about discretion and keeping the story quiet. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Simpson was leaking it and shopping it to every paper and network in D.C. and New York. And Steele was feeding it as fast as he could to the FBI, the CIA, and Senator Magoo. Da 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 Yes, that's right. To say in this article that they were trying to keep it discreet and not talk about it, while we know for a fact that Glenn Simpson was out there pushing it as hard as he could, he paid uh, uh, Chris Steele to come over two times from the UK to sit down and talk personally to the New York Times, to the Washington Post, to Yahoo News, Michael Isikoff, to tell him because they didn't believe Glenn Simpson. They didn't believe him, so he said, hey, I'll get the guy here personally. He can tell you to his face how, how legit this all is. And they said, sure, bring it on. And they still didn't believe it. The fact is that it appears that 99% of that dossier was used to secure a FISA warrant, which launched the surveillance and all the unmasking on Trump and his team to bring about the evidence for a deep state coup. It was shared with the Clinton-friendly media to fuel the narrative to benefit Clinton and set the stage for the deep state coup. How about this, Homer and little Peter? Why don't you guys release the transcripts of the hearings you were forced by subpoena to sit through? Get it all out there. You know, it's funny, in the article they, they complain. They say, well, why don't they just... Why don't they just release the transcripts? And to that, Charles Grassley came back to them in a tweet and said, oh yeah, well how about then you appear for open hearings? Because see, that's what, how it's supposed to be going back almost a year ago. They tried to get uh, the owners of Fusion GPS to come and sit for open hearings in two different committees. Their lawyers refused. They refused. And then, after months and months of negotiation, they finally got them to testify behind closed doors, but only under certain conditions. And the reason is because the ranking Democrat on two of those committees uh, were blocking that. They were blocking it. So the two Republican members who chair the committee had to, had to cut a deal. And as part of that deal, Fusion GPS got to uh, plead the fifth and not answer any question they didn't want to answer. They didn't have to produce a lot of documents and records, including bank records, that they didn't want to produce. And they basically were able to uh, bring their attorneys. They were able to not totally answer a lot of questions and things and such. So they really didn't. So in this article, uh, uh, Homer Simpson and Little Peter try to make the argument in this article that they've been very forthcoming. Oh, they've come out there and given everything that the committees wanted. They've been upfront and trustworthy and, and, and all this kind of stuff. No, no, no. They battled it for over a year. And only when they knew they had cover by the ranking Democrats on the committee where they could plead the fifth, not answer questions, not provide the documents that were requested, uh, and all these sorts of things, only then did they do the closed sessions. And now they're saying, yeah, release the transcripts. Oh, yeah, release the transcripts because the transcripts won't tell us anything because the deal that was cut. Because of the ranking Democrats who've been fighting it all along, Mr. Schiff. And remember, Mr. Schiff, in about two weeks, we're going to find out if it was you, and we're pretty sure it was, who leaked that conversation to CNN and Yahoo about the meeting 
uh, in the notes from the Jared Kushner meeting. It was you, Mr. Schiff, and it was you, Mr. Schiff, who was behind putting together this group of Democrats to block the Republicans on those committees to get to the bottom of things with Fusion GPS. It was you who allowed them to do this closed session and not have to give up anything. They were asked to supply all these documents and banking records. What did they give them? They gave them thousands of newspaper clippings and a bunch of many, uh, about 10,000 pieces of documents, a lot of them completely blanked out in white. They gave up nothing, nothing. They didn't come clean. They didn't tell the truth. They didn't own up to anything. But in this article, they try to make you believe the opposite. Bullshit. I'm calling bullshit on little Peter and Homer. They're lying again, and they're going to be destroyed financially, personally, and professionally. When we find out who they were paying to run that garbage, a lot of nervous, nah, a lot of nervous journalists right now in D.C., I can assure you of that. A lot of them sweating and peeing their pants. And the rotten reverend, my guess is she's got a full colostomy bag. What do you think? Huma might stop by to empty it for her. Let's see. It was also you, Homer. It was you, Homer, that leaked the story to Michael Isikoff at Yahoo that the U.S. government was investigating whether or not Carter Page met with Russian officials to cut a deal that would lift sanctions on Russia. And now, Homer, Carter Page is suing you because you could not prove it. It was a lie and you got busted. And now Carter Page is suing your ass off right along with those three Russian oligarchs from Alpha Bank. Because it was all a lie, Homer. Busted. What you gonna do, what you gonna do, brother? Zero, the hero. This story essentially tries to disassociate itself from the dossier and shift the focus to a new narrative, collusion, and the new smoking gun. <clears throat> which is Papagalopoulos, <clears throat> who was probably also working for Fusion GPS. <clears throat> Just one problem, Homer. What did the Justice Department and the FBI do when they received reports from Christopher Steele? What actions did they take? Let me say that again. This is a very important question. What did the Justice Department and the FBI do when they received those reports from Christopher Steele. They got a FISA warrant on Carter Page. Page had zero contact with Papadopoulos, and both Page and Papagalopoulos have made this fact, have admitted this fact. Also, this has been established in the statement of the offense filed by special counsel Uncle Bob the Executioner Mueller when Papagalopoulos pleaded guilty a few weeks ago. The only source we know of that cites Carter Page is the dossier. That is why Page is suing your ass off, Homer and Little Peter, and why GPS Fusion is going to be bankrupt and out of business, and your reputations will be destroyed, along with your friends, do you think Homer and little Peter are tired of winning? I don't think so. Nothing in the op-ed about Nellie Orr working at Fusion. Nothing in the op-ed about Homer Simpson meeting with Bruce Orr. Nothing about the Trump Tower meeting that you, Homer, deny knowing anything about, despite the fact that you met with Vessel Niskaya before and after the tower meeting, according to her. And in light of the fact that the meeting was set up by Rob Goldstone, a Fusion GPS associate, we can only assume, Homer, that you're lying because that's what you do most of the time. You lie. You lie so much you can't even tell when you're lying anymore. But guess what? We can tell. For whom the bells tolls, the bells toll, or the bell tolls, could be bells, could be one bell, three bells, nine bells, eleven bells, doesn't matter, they're all tolling, they're all ringing, 
Ringing toll. Do you have tolls? I don't. Not here. I understand they have tolls in New Jersey. Toll roads? I don't know. But there'll be a toll to be paid by Fusion GPS for all the lying. And as we talked about yesterday, the, the, the man which they uh, try to build up to sell all of this, Christopher Steele, he's backing away from all of it. He's looking for the exit. What does this all tell you? <clears throat> this tells you why Paul Ryan, Big Ears Eddie Munster Ryan, went along and backed Devin Nunes. He knows what's coming. He knows that the shit is about to hit the fan. Okay. <clears throat> Most of you know, I've mentioned before, I am a huge fan of a YouTuber called Son of Nuo. I know other uh, subscribers of mine are subscribers to his channel. And I know that you like to send me links whenever he puts up a new video. But just so you know, you can do it. I appreciate it. I love you for it. But I am a subscriber. So as soon as you get the email telling you he's uploaded a new, vi new video, I get the email too. And I've had a couple email uh, exchanges, I guess. But uh, anyway, the bottom line is, is that um, back after we learned that Papagalopoulos had uh, agreed to a plea deal and agreed to wear a wire and all that, at that point, I began to look into Papagalopoulos a little bit and I thought, you know, this guy more and more, as I've been saying for the past month and a half or however long it's been since we learned of that, that he looks a lot more like a mole than anything else to me. Well, uh, the son of Nuo has uh, got a two-part video. He's only uploaded the first part. The second part hasn't uploaded yet. And he uploaded the first part, and he went in and did some very deep background investigation on Papagalopoulos and also on Mr. Downer, uh, the Australian diplomat, and also on Mr. Misfud, uh, who was the man who's alleged to have told Papagalopoulos about the Russian having uh, Hillary's emails, which Papagalopoulos allegedly shared with Mr. Downer, who then shared it with American officials. This is the story. This is what we're being told. Now, Son of Nuo uh, is, I think, one of the best, if not the single best, investigator on YouTube. Again, he doesn't try to entertain you. He doesn't try to do any of that. Uh, like that. He's just hardcore, does deep investigation. I think he has some kind of a legal background. Maybe he's a paralegal. Maybe he works at a law firm. Uh, I don't really know, but he's got some access uh, that most people don't have, and he does an excellent job of research. Absolutely great research. And so uh, I'm expecting that uh, I'll be able to see part two sometime, hopefully in the next day or two, he'll get it uploaded and we'll get to see it. But just from what I saw in part one, absolutely bombshell information, background information on Papagalopoulos, um, Mr. Downer, and Mr. Misfit. So uh, sometime in the next two or three days, uh, as soon as part two is, is done and I've had a chance to digest that, I will be commenting on that. Uh, but I, but if you are not a subscriber to Son of Nuo, that's S O N O F N E W O, just all one word. Uh, if you're not a subscriber to Son of Nuo, I highly recommend you subscribe to his channel. I mean, you can watch like Alec Jones. You can get entertainment. You can watch The Hard Bastard. He's pretty funny. You can watch Sticks, Hexenheimer for the phil philosophical look at a lot of different things. You can go for the progressive H A Goodman, who's you know, kind of a straight humor guy but does you know good commentary but if you're looking for hard core investigative research son of nuo hands down number one best on the web no one's even close including me so that's my uh push to him and also highly recommend another website that if uh, a lot of you don't look at it's called conservative treehouse conservative treehouse we don't really know the name of the journalist there, but they're very, very good. <laughs> uh, they don't give their names. They use pseudonyms. But uh, anyway, a very, very good website as well. So if you haven't checked out Son of Nuo or the Conservative Treehouse, I recommend that you do. And uh, in the meantime, but even if you don't, I uh, do follow both of these uh, sources, and uh, they generally find their way into my Towergate news uh, from time to time. So uh, you'll be really excited uh, to get this information that he's dug up. Uh, that'll come up here probably in the next two or three days when I have a chance to see the second video. But uh, at this point, 
Uh, it looks like a huge day today if you like to win. We are winning, winning, winning every single day, and today was huge wins on multiple fronts. Stay tuned for more Towergate. I'll be back.